Hi Leo, it's Elle here to do your weekly reading. This will be from December 8th through the 14th, 2019. Thank you for being here. Happy holidays to all. It is a general reading, so it will not resonate with every Leo. If it does resonate with you, please like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. It is much appreciated. Thank you to those who already do so. So I've taken the liberty of pulling a few cards for the sake of time. All right, so Leo, how you come into the week is the Queen of Water. Very nice. All right, the advice here is the Tower. All right, that's good. And the outcome is the Judgment Call or Judgment. All right, Leo, so decide what it is you want. Uh, you can't keep straddling the fence. You can't keep playing two positions, okay? For some of you, uh, you have two very real options, okay? You need to go into this week emotionally stable. Uh, if there's a chemical imbalance, then take your meds. This, that is not funny. That is not funny. A lot of us deal with uh, mental issues uh, that we were born with you know chemical and horm hormonal imbalance so we have to do that some of us just need to balance out our emotions because there is a decision to be made take a more playful approach to this uh, weigh the pros and the cons it may even cause for you to write things out what is best for you in regards to the decision you will make because you're going to have to cut out some aspects, some other way of living, some other lifestyle. It's not going to be readily available to you as a choice. If you were making a choice, you know, it's do I want hamburger or hot dog? I choose hamburger, but hot dogs are still right there if I want to just walk back up to the counter and ask for a hot dog. A decision is to say, okay, it's hamburger or it's hot dog. I'm only, we only have um, money for hamburger or hot dog. And, and um, if you choose hamburger, then we're going to buy all hamburgers. Hot dogs will not be readily available for you. So you have to make that decision. You're cutting out one, uh, one other choice. So you have to make some decision. It could be in regards to business. It could be in regards to business and love. It could be the entanglement of money, material possessions, or someone just being overly, uh, you know, their materials are possessing them. Um, this could be in regards to work ethic. This could be in regards to your everyday habits and what you do. You may have to make a decision in regards to how are you going to go about uh, this new life this new lifestyle change the judgment card talks about the past is over and it's trying to release you but you may be still holding on to it live in the present in the here and the now make a decision for the here and for the now because there's some aspect of your lifestyle that has changed you haven't kept up with the change or is changing or you need to make a lifestyle change so Altogether, it is lifestyle change here. It looks like there will be some positive change too. Um, but you just need to be definitive in which position you're choosing. The tower here is your advice. It says that some challenge, uh, some problem has um, state claim and uh, a significant relationship, uh, a project, a business. And you're going to have to deal with this this um, issue here because it has historical value, meaning you've been here before. It has this same problem has reared its ugly head, maybe in the same relationship, business, uh, friendship, partnership, whatever. But you've been here before. You need to finally deal with it. That's why. You keep building on faulty ground because you won't deal with the root of the issue. And that's why they say the tower comes in and breaks everything down so you can possibly deal with the root and then build in uh, a more uh, stable, a more um, positive, a more um, feasible fashion. Right now, it's like the example would be the married couple. Uh, having the issue of uh, 
discipline the children. The mother sees it this way, the father sees it this way, or for the same sex, you, you guys interchange that, whatever. Um, and so instead of let's go to some counseling, let's really deal with the, the frustration that is here uh, with us parenting our child or children, you just, uh, you just kind of don't talk about it. And you just walk on eggshells and you hope that, you know, this just doesn't arise anymore. But of course, disciplining the children, that's what parenting and rearing children is about. So, of course, the issue arises, it comes up again. Historical value is just repeating until you actually deal with it instead of just walking away and not talking about it, not doing anything. I'm, I'm using the, the example of husband and wife parenting children, but it could be anything for you. Um, so you, you definitely need to uh, deal with the root cause and not the branches and the leaves and, you know, look at another tree over here. No, deal with the root of the matter so that you guys can not have the tower keep popping up here for you. You need to make some lifestyle alteration. This is another two card. We have the two of earth here. Definitely decision. You got to make a decision to, I'm not going to live in the past anymore. I'm not going to be excessive. I'm not going to be uh, the the excessive uh, alcohol abuser, the excessive shopper. Uh, I'm not going to do whatever it is that was not pushing me and propelling me to the next card which will be the world uh learning the le the life lesson here i'm not going to stay in that lifestyle i'm coming out of it and i'm making real significant change okay uh by way of a decision okay so let's and this could be in regards to children we have the queen of water here it could be the mother of or mother or motherly energy and let's see what this is about ring you know the the ring come out of the ring some of you could be an actual physical ring let's see uh career so and then uh oh we have two here on top closed everybody's getting closed stop wow and then we have a newborn baby okay so some of you are staying in a position for the children i mentioned children just so happen i use that example um, some of you, you have to deal with, um, some of you have a business or businesses and you're looking at them as newborn babies. You have to nurture them. You have to grow them, right? And then some of you, this is a physical newborn baby or, or someone, a baby that is under two years old or under three years old or something of that nature. Um, it's like I said before, like some of you have married business and um, marriage and you have to make some decision about them both but they it's not a separate decision it's not like oh, okay this, I'm going to do this with the career and this with the marriage the, the career and the marriage are together some of you are just close to the opportunity or close to the career. This looks like reality TV or or how you or there's a there's a mirror, there's a there's um someone looking in on your life and some of you are close to that and you want to stop it. That might be the root of the problem, or there's too many people who know your business. It, it's not reality TV. This is social media. It's, it's a window in on your life. One that either you have created, Leo, or your partner, or both. And now somebody, you or the other person, wants out. You have to make a decision about this love affair, this business contract. It might not be feasible. You got to make some decision here. All right, Leo, have a really good week. I think you have you guys have been here for a while. Make the decision. Put the other person or the situation or yourself out of your misery. 
Um, some of you could be becoming pregnant. There's an element of somebody being incarcerated. You have to make some decision for them about money. Yeah. Leo, go over to the website, book your own personal reading there so you can ask all the questions you want to ask, get the clarity that you need. Keep in mind, gift cards are readily available for purchase. If you want to gift the gift of clarity this uh, holiday season, also stay tuned for Elle's Corner, Elle's Real, whatever. I want to come up with a real name for it, but some uh, real world advice that you could use could not use could throw away whatever i hope that you find something that resonates with you and your soul so that you can propel yourself forward okay take care leo happy holidays hello everyone so today on l's real corner all right so today we're going to talk about emotionally unavailable men you can pertain this to women too but the demographics of my channel are is more women watching uh, the videos uh subscribing to the channel than men so i apologize if you're a man and you like women or same sex just apply it to your life right okay all right so emotionally unavailable men women cat dog whatever are basically non-committal okay though these are non-committal people these are people who are not able to make any lasting commitment with you uh, with anything or with anybody it, it might spill over into every facet of their life we're talking about more so relationships romantic relationships um, so that's that's what we have here not they may be non-committal because they're still dating other people they could be married, uh, in love with another, or there could be significant emotional trauma that just doesn't allow them to commit, um, and which hence they are emotional, emotionally unavailable. So when we look at, when we dissect this, this term here, we kind of look at it from an aerial view and we say emotionally unavailable the mind wants to rationalize that that statement in regards to the person that we like or love and say that no 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 that they're not emotionally unavailable because you know they tell me how much they like me they compliment me they touch me we have sex blah 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 so you rationalize and you say they're not emotionally unavailable they are whatever you want to deem them in, as but emotionally unavailable what should be inserted into that statement is this person is unavailable to invest emotionally with you see an investment is it's a relationship it's i put in and then i'm going to receive out it is um it is equal in a sense, suppo supposedly, you know. Um, it is a relationship. It, it could be if an if-then relationship. If I do this, then I'll get this. This type of person, the emotionally unavailable person, is not investing in anything. They're surface dwellers. So when you say, no, my guy's not emotionally unavailable because he compliments me well let's see what emotionally unavailable men or women are they're complimentary they're seductive you know so if you're trying to rationalize that your person isn't emotionally unavailable because they tell you how nice you look well that is a key factor of an un emotionally unavailable person it is to dwell on the surface we're not going deep about anything, okay? Because they are void of 
they, they, they just don't have the capacity for whatever reason. We've got some reasons here. It could be more uh, to invest emotionally. Okay, so you get an emotional response from them, but it's not a real investment to tell me that I look nice in my dress or I have a nice body or uh, you like the way I we had sex when I did this move or that move. That's complimentary. They, they are that. They will compliment you. They will um, put themselves on the line for, you know, for those purposes. So let's look at what emotionally unavailable men or women people are. Evasive seductive, complimentary, rigid, and routine. Key point right here. Rigid in their routine. They will not allow you or pretty much anyone, but definitely you, because we're only talking about you and this other person, right? They will not allow you to dictate, uh, interfere with, mess up a routine. So if they tell you that we're meeting on Monday at 6 p.m. at this place and you say well no i you know monday isn't good for me let's do tuesday um maybe at the same place uh 7 p.m no this is what i want i want it here now that time if you can't do it then okay i'm okay with not seeing you i'm okay with us not getting together but it has to be on my turn my terms, my routine, and their routine about that. You know, they see you on these days. Maybe because on the other days they are either dating, married, in love with another, or there's significant there's some significant emotional trauma. So when they do get close to people, they back away. So they only want to, you know, they, they have a routine for how they deal with people. They're always in control. They always want to be in control. To be out of control of a situation where they're not investing in it emotionally would would deem it as would deem this situation as one that they are willing to invest in, willing to do the give and take, willing to allow you to take the ring sometime. No. They're not into that. There's no um investment here. They're unavailable completely. Okay? So this is the definition of the emotionally unavailable person, right? So right now, right now, you need to determine if you're dealing with an emotionally unavailable person or if you are that emotionally unavailable person. So my question to those who say, yes, I'm dealing with the emotionally unavailable man or woman, uh, you have to determine right now, right now, what is your end game here? What do you want from this situation? What is the end game? A lot of you, we talked about this last time, the end game. You just go through relationships. Some of you even going through life, no real end game. What's the end game? Okay. Uh, what would make you content in this relationship? Yeah, uh, contentment. Yeah, in this day and age, we have been fed that contentment is a bad thing. It is a bad word. You should never be content. You should always be striving for more and more and more, better, better, better. But contentment is not bad if it's within your reason and if you have defined it completely and utterly and you only define that once you figure out who the hell you are, what you want, and then you can start to actually answer some of these questions. Like, what is my end game, right? Okay, so anyway moving right along you say um i say what is your end game most of you are going to say it's commitment you want this person this non-committal person to commit okay so you're asking for something um you're asking for this person to give you something that they're not open to giving or maybe they don't even know how to give right so you're trying to get water from the rock okay granted it can happen. It can happen. But I do want you to know that this is not this is not a situation an emotionally unavailable person. This is not a situation that happens overnight. It's not a situation that that doesn't happen without drama, without the breakups to makeups. Just it's not a situation that you just say, "Okay, I want commitment." 
and you tell the person and they say, great, I've been non-committal all this time and you've come along and asked me for a commitment and now I want commitment. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay. Um, especially if you're dealing with a married individual or someone who is in love with another, how will you know these things, right? If they're still dating other women, there's emotional trauma, married or in love with another person. Learn your person. Ask questions. Ask. B, here's the tarot for you. The page of swords. Be inquisitive. Be curious. Be asking the questions. Spy within reason. If they have social media, look at the social media. If there's a mutual friend, ask Sur surface level questions to gain knowledge about your person learn your person this is if you want commitment learn this person so you know what you're dealing with you know who you're dealing with the most i say this every single time or i ask the question every time i i do a reading a personal reading the the other person, the quarant, wants to know, well, how does this person do this? And how do they feel about this? And blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, have you even talked to this person? Have you asked any questions? You have to ask. Okay, so you say, well, I'm not going to get the truth. Sometimes asking the question is not about getting the truth. Expecting, uh... The asking is not in the, you know, in the expecting. You're going to get whatever you're going to get, right? But you can always draw back on when you have the conversation, when you ask the question. If you say, L, um, how long have you been on YouTube, right? You're expecting the truth from me. But let's say I lied. You say, I have been on YouTube, doing YouTube videos for seven years well we know that that is not the truth you we both go on about our lives you find out that i've only been doing youtube videos for two years uh well three years and then you say you come back to me you say well i i asked you the question how long had you been doing YouTube videos? See, you hold a person accountable for their words. You've heard the term, uh, you know, my word is my bond or words are our bond. You can, it's surety. It's like a surety bond. If I ask you if you are single and you're married and I find out that later down the line, then I have, you have to be held accountable. That person, you don't give that person an out. Because now when you find out, you you say, you said you were single. I found out you were married. They'll say, they can't say, well, you never asked. You say, no, we had this conversation. I asked the question. You lied. So that makes you a married liar. I'm done. But anyway, moving right along. You want to be asking questions. You want to be the page of swords. Learn your person. If you want commitment from a non-committal person, you have to know what they're dealing with within themselves. You have to know what they're dealing with within their own life. Okay? So, you, you start, you become the page of swords and you start asking the questions. An emotionally unavailable person, man or woman, man or woman will probably, most likely elude or or move toward toward evasiveness you start asking questions it's no more surface level you're trying to go deep you know um you may say well i only see you on wednesday and friday what are you doing you know the other days of the week or i know you see you work blah 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 but um maybe we can get together on one of those other days if they start to be evasive then you know, what is that? That says emotionally unavailable men, but women too, anyone, it, they are what well, evasive. So you know that you're dealing with that. You know that this is the seven of swords. When people start to be evasive, seven of swords, there is more to the story. They're giving you, now this is when they start to either play mental games. They give you just a little bit 
or they just completely change the subject. They go back to being either seductive or complimenting you um, in some fashion. They go back to certain to being surface dwellers. So you know that okay, I'm dealing with a highly unavail you know emotionally unavailable person. All right, because they become the seven of swords. Now at this point. You can deal with this shit. I wouldn't. Um, if you want to continue to deal with this, state your claim. Be the ace of swords. Stating your claim is, I feel like our relationship needs to go to another level. I feel like I don't know you at times. I would like to get to know you. To know you outside of the bedroom outside of doing something like going to dinner or um drinks i just i want to really spend more time with you around you because i would like to get to know you all right they're probably going to run back to evasiveness or or you're messing with the rigid the rigidness of their routine right so um in stating your claim, you're saying, I would like to get to know you. And if that is not an option, then, you know, we might need to be. This is when you start to create boundaries with this person, this emotionally unavailable person. Um, you start to create those boundaries. You say, if I can't get to know you on a different, deeper level, then we need to probably, you know, see each other less or maybe you or I need to get to a better place where we're wanting the same thing. You put the ball into their court. You create that boundary, which is the seven of wands. Okay. Create the boundaries. Blockage. Now, you, they can't get to you with all of this doing, all of this surface dwelling, being seductive, complimenting you. Uh, you know, showing you a good time. They can't do that. You've created the boundary. You're the seven of wands. You stated your claim and now you're creating the boundaries. Now, after you create the boundaries, you're going to have to wait for results. If this surface dweller or this emotionally unavailable person really comes into their own and really digs deep and says, you know what, I really like this person. Maybe I should treat them a little better. Maybe I should open up a little more. They'll come around, right? Or maybe they won't. You need to be at this point waiting for results. The seven of pentacles. The seven of pentacles is someone who there's a temporary pause, okay? Um, but But do understand that good news and good tidings, this turning in your favor, um, whether it's the fact that you may have to walk away permanently or that this person comes back around, it's still all good either way. Because I'll tell you why, but let's go back to Seven of Pentacles. Waiting for results. You're the Seven of Pentacles. You're not being pushy. There might not even be a lot of communication. You're just you're just waiting. And you're waiting for the return on your investment. You invested. You are emotionally available. This person isn't. You've stated your claim. You've created the boundaries. And now you're waiting for results. And if you do not get the result that you want, maybe this person never comes back around. Or they come back around to being emotionally unavailable. They, they still come back around being evasive, seductive. You know, the same old thing. Then you might need to... Um, this is why the, I put the world here. You Now you need to go into the next chapter. You need to learn the freaking lesson. The world is about achievement, learning the lesson, going to the next chapter, moving on from situation, okay? you Some of you may need to walk away permanently. It's not going to turn in your favor, especially if you want commitment. Determine what you want. What is your end game here? If you just want to hang out with the person, you like having sex, you like having escapades, you like all of that stuff, then continue. Scratch all of this. Just know what you're dealing with, right? If you want more, you're going to have to walk away permanently if this person is just not ready to give you what you want. 
that is easier said than done, but it can be done. That is the that is hence that's the operative word. It can be done. You're gonna have to turn into the world. Learn the lesson. Walk away. A person can institute these types, this type of behavior when they've completely accepted themselves and they come into their own and there's no trauma. Um, there's no emotional trauma that they're dealing with. When you're hurt, you find another hurt person and you deal with this karmic situation. But when you are whole, you're, you're healed, you, you see the lesson in this and you and you can walk away, be able to walk away. Um, emotionally um stable balanced people who have gone through who have learned the lesson are able to walk away uh we're at 19 minutes shit so you need to be able to to walk away um if you if the result is this person is coming back and being the same and some of you you'll get a turnaround you'll get the person coming back and um giving you exactly what you want still the world now you're going to the next chapter because you now know how to deal with with situations you can readily identify. Also, with me writing the tarot, um, the significance of the tarot in here is, of course, this is a tarot channel, is to bring in the tarot. But it's also, uh, if some of you have tarot decks at home and you pull cards for yourself in regards to situations, relationship, or business or family or career, whatever, you know, if, if you pull a card and you ask the cards, how should I be or what should I do um, in regards to dealing with this guy and you pull the page of swords, then you know you need to ask questions. You need to be more inquisitive. You need to be more cu curious. You need to be willing to learn. Learn this person. You don't know them. You do need to do the investigative work. The Page of Swords is the investigator because eventually he's going to turn into the scientist, the King of Swords. So anyway, but you got to do the work of learning them, right? So we have all these sevens here, seven of wands, seven of pentacles, and the seven of swords. The seven talks about marriage, relationships, um, um, business, business partnerships. It talks about sharing it talks about interpersonal uh, dynamic or connection, how this person comes off. So if you're pulling a seven of swords for your person, then you know there's more to the story. They're giving you a bit and not the whole. So anyway, I hope that this was informative to you. Um, thank you for being here. Continue. Share this. This is relatable information for for anybody um share this video okay thank you guys take care guys